everyone welcome to watch it paint it today we're back final video we're here green horde zombie side by simon games this is the last miniature from the core set this is the necromancer we're going to be painting in this video hallelujah we have made it through the whole set i think this is the first game i've done every tutorial for anyway let's have a look what we're doing so i'm just showing you here i'm using a very 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 cheap brush this is by quick draw supplies you can check the link in the description below they support the channel and it'd be awesome if you guys are after some cheap brushes they post worldwide this is like 10 cents a brush or something and the reason i'm going to be using that is because i'm just demonstrating here i'm just going to be slapping the base coat on this is unprimed and i'm going to using vallejo game color unfortunately the army painter colors i've got just don't have the color i want to use for this necromancer so i'm going to be mixing it with myself using vallejo's game color so that can be used as a primer and a base coat all in one i'm going to be using their royal purple and cold gray i'm going to be mixing these two together it's about well you, you can see it there i'm doing it in front of you so you can sort of get a gist for the color it's quite hard to to know the percentages it was, that was probably about 33 percent purple 66 percent of that gray that's going to make quite a pale grayish purple and i'm going to be using this for the base coat for his skin but as i mentioned it's not primed this is game color so it can be used as a primer so i'm going to apply it to the whole model and that's going to give me a nice primer to paint on top of just going to fast forward that through you know what putting paint on an entire model looks like and that's how he looks when it's finished so he's now prime he's ready to go and i've done the skin color i couldn't find a army paint a primer of that skin color either so you know, this is the best i'm doing i'm going to try and do the, the majority of this painting using that army painter green horde and the black plague uh, paint set uh but that's one bit i can't do and there's a few more in the video which i can't do but i, I you know i'm doing the best i can and here uh, i'm trying to trying to follow that mantra and and show you that i'm mixing that color that i want to use for his skirt and that was using two army painted colors goblin green and abomination gore that was about 66 percent of the goblin 33 of the gore so it's making quite a pale orangey brown i guess i would call this and again i'm using that cheap brush from quick draw supplies this is an accurate work although the model is small it's zombie side after all these are smallish models at least it doesn't need to be super accurate and there's just no point whatsoever in burning through my higher quality brushes i think what you can do with cheap brushes you should do before i wasn't doing that and now i'm just saving some of my good brushes speaking of which just switched to my rosemary and co so I'm now doing the, the harder to reach areas and the very edges of this skirt where I don't want to get it on any of that skin that I've already painted. So I'm just a much better point on this brush and I'm just being a lot more careful. I'm going to stick with that now as I start painting the belt around his waist and that little random bag that he's got on his, on his right hand side. I'm going to use Army Painters Wolf Grey. It's part of the set that I've been trying to use for painting this this zombie side game. It, it's designed for the set and I'm trying to where I can to do it. but I've discovered you need to pick up speaking of which you need to pick up a couple of color colors if you want to follow the artwork i tried and tried and tried to make a turquoisey jade green this is jade green by vallejo and i tried to mix this i i couldn't do it with the colors that i've got if anybody knows let me know in the comments below how you can make this sort of sea green this is a jade green turquoise would be acceptable too but i felt like this one matched the artwork as best as i could now switching back to those army painter colors i'm going to be using goblin skin and this is for the inside of his fur cloak. Yeah, cloak. It is a cloak. Again, using my my Rosemary & Co brush here, my favoured brush, I think. It's got the finest point, the best tip that I have. And I'm using that because, it's again, I'm dodging the skin and I, still, I just want to get in around that staff without colouring any of that. While I've got this colour out, I'm just going to paint on all those bits of him that i'll be doing in gold later so that's his chin guard thing chin ornament he's got a couple of chest rings classic whatever they're for in the beak of his bird after that we're going to be using crush skull that's part of that army painter green horde set so this is a slightly off white i'm going to be doing those wraps around well you can really only see his left leg but if you do look under his skirt he is his right foot is there so i've got a little bit of that and i'm also going to be doing his bone staff i think it's bone but in the artwork it's quite light so i may as well paint it in that color 
Leather Brown is going to be the brown. That's from the Black Plague set. I think it's the only brown available if you're just trying to use those two army painter ones. But this is going to be for all the fur on this cloak, all, all down his back. And I'm just going to paint the whole thing. Again, I've whipped out that cheap brush. I'm going to be jabbing this in. I'm just going to be piling on that paint. I mean, not, obviously not super duper too thick, but you know, I'm just trying to get it in all those nooks and crannies. So I'm just not taking the care I should do with a brush. But if I've got a 10 cents brush, you know, who cares? Uh, it's not going to break the bank. Necromancer cloak, that's that dark gray in the set. And I'm going to be painting on the bird hat that he's got, which I happened. Has anybody noticed that seems like it's got like the lowest detail of any Simon model I've ever seen. It's like a black blob on his head to me. I'm also going to be doing the blade for his dagger. After that, that's basically a base, base coat done. By basically, I mean it's in, entirely done. That's all I'm going to do on the base coat. So I'm moving on to shading. I'm going to start with survivor shader. I'm going to be darkening up that gray wolf gray by the army paint around his waist and that satchel and then i'm going to use a light tone and that's just going to be for the inside of his cloak and that bone staff as well i just want to add a little bit of shade i don't want to alter the color too much i just want to make it look a little bit well i just want to have some shadows and make it look a little bit 3d i'm also going to do the skirt in the same as you i mean you can see in the video it's not altering that color very much it's just adding some very subtle shadows just making it look quite clean and fresh Whereas Deep Shader, this is going to add, this is a darker brown, this is going to add a lot, lot higher contrasting shadows. And I'm going to be applying that to the wraps on his on his leg, as well as the, the, the fur down the back. I really want to make the details, pull those details out, have really, really dark shadows. And I'm going to make it pop a lot higher with really bright highlights later. Well, it's not going to be that bright, but it's going to be bright. You're going to notice the difference soon. So I'm just showing you now that is how it looks after the base coat and after all the shading. And you might just want to stop there. That is, that's not too difficult work. Highlighting, I would say, is taking it to the next level. It can be a little bit more difficult, but I just wanted to show you what it would look like at that point. That's quite quick. That's probably about half an hour's work. Now, if you are ready for the challenge and you would like to step up to this highlighting, or you know, you're already well beyond me anyway. But this is the highlighting part. We're going to be starting with the skin and we're going to be brightening up that royal purple a little bit further. So this is sort of 20% royal purple, 80% of wolf gray by Vallejo, really, really brightening it up now. We've applied no shade, no wash to that skin. So we're going to apply two or three levels of highlight to really make that skin look quite realistic and bring it to a lighter finish and we're just painting all of his ribs and his muscles and all all of these steps of the highlights we're going to go through so now we're down to the only 10 percent of this royal purple each time all of these mixes are going to be heavily watered down probably 50 percent water we're going to be applying it with a very fine point brush this is one of my rosemary and cobe ones and we're just going to be applying it to each part of his muscles so all of his abs all of his ribs around his nipple he's the, this guy's got this guy is ripped. He's got tons and tons of muscles. You can see all of the sort of ligaments, I guess. I don't know. His bicep muscles, his forearm muscles, you know, his fingers. This is highly detailed around his fingers. You can see all of the joints. You can highlight up all of those. And you want to be applying these highlights one on top of another, moving towards the center of each part of the muscle or, or the very edge, depending which you can get to and depending which part of Part of it is and hopefully you can sort of see that and if not follow along in some of my previous videos and I explain a bit, bit, bit better I guess the edge highlighting this model's just quite small and difficult to see especially unless you want these videos to be three hours long but well, it doesn't take me three hours but an hour and a half long and then you can see exactly what I'm doing but how will I talk that fast for that long who knows then I just remembered I forgot to add a little bit of that purple this is probably the 20 percent 80 percent purple and he's just got some wraps around his staff so i just painted those on just to tie in with the artwork no more no less after that just going to show you a little bit of dry brushing probably not showed you that for a while i try not to show you the same techniques over and over and again i mean once you know them you know them so i'm trying not to bore you but once in a while there's probably some new subscribers maybe some new painters haven't seen this so i'm just showing you my dry brush nice and flat nice and stiff brush and then taking some leather brown by the army painter putting it on the tip of the brush and wiping it off basically until next to no paint so that's still too much paint and then we wipe off a bit more and then we're down and i'm going to very 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 lightly yeah i mean you can see that i'm using the normal speed here so hopefully you can catch this just gently catching my brush across and that's going to catch all those raised parts of this fur 
and you can see in the video starting to lighten that up and bring it back to that original base color that I did and just leaving the wash in all of the, the shaded parts, all of the indents in, in the fur and add, add in a higher contrast. It's going to really make the fur start to pop out and that, this is going to look really, really good from a distance and look really realistic and be quite eye-catching in on the table while we're playing. So just, just while we're watching, we've just finished that off and it a little bit speeded up. How do you feel about I've now talked for 10 minutes nonstop. Austin's going to be uploading some videos very shortly and he's going to add some music to it, see how you feel about that. How do you feel about this one? I just try and talk nonstop. Don't try and add any music, but maybe it'd be better if I just chilled out and left you to it and you could watch along. Let me know in the comments below how you feel about either or if maybe you don't even mind, but let me know either way. Now we're mixing in some goblin skin. That was about 50-50, so we're really lightening up the, the leather brown now, and we're going to be doing exactly the same. Dry brushing again, get most of that paint off, and just really, really, really gently going back over it. Now I'm going to aim for more of the raised parts of the cloak and, the, and down all the edges. So I'm going to get a bit of edge highlighting on the fur, and all of these folds you can see, I'm going to try and concentrate on those and just lighten those up a little bit more than the rest. I'm not going to be pushing too hard because I don't want to go into any of the, the more recessed parts of the fold, I guess. So just, just brightening this up, just making it look a little bit more realistic. Again, adding a little bit more of that pop to the miniature that's going to make it look really, really good on the table. Then I'm going to take a little bit of goblin skin. I'm going to be highlighting up the inside of his cloak. So really just catching those raised folds just down the edge and just watered down and blending that a bit into the shade so it just looks a little bit more realistic. Just going to get a little bit on the pommel of his of his dagger there. Then I'm going to mix up that same colour that I started with on the skirt, about 66% Abomination Gore, 33% Goblin Skin reversed. It was the other way around, sorry. Two, two thirds Goblin Skin. This is more yellow than it is red because that red is just so much darker. It just makes it that orangey brown and then we're just going to edge highlight i'm going to catch all the folds and all along where it's above his belt as well that, that bit i think is really really important that's going to make your model look really really like you've spent a lot of time on it like it's really well detailed so that's a great part to spend a little bit of time on it's not very big so it's not going to take that long crush skull just going to go around again edge highlighting now so i'm going to go around all of those sorts of bandages on his feet and just catch as many edges as i can all the raised ones some are in sort of indented and some are more raised so i'm just going to alternate catching the raised ones and just try and make that look realistic i'm going to use the side of my brush along his he's got some string around his dagger and just catch them and bring a little bit of highlighting into that and then the bow and i'm just going to basically paint down the front edge of that and just make that look as highlighted down the, the middle of it as i can and there's a skull on his crotch uh which i'm just going to paint bit by basically back in and just leave some shade in the recesses of that skull after that i'm going to very very carefully take some goblin skin and paint on some of these crosses on his belt again a little bit of time here a little bit of attention to detail and this is really really going to make your model go from sort of zero to hero now nah, i think by this time your model's probably looking really good but this is the sort of thing people pick up and think wow you've even done x y or z and this is one of them painting in these crosses goblin yellow goblin skin i didn't do anything until now i'm just going to do it as a final touch and that's going to really make them look good gray jean gray jean jade green is going to blend into my background there so you could barely see it but i'm just going to be touching up those bits of metal that are dangling from him and this mask that he's got around him so i'm going to bring back some in that color after i use plague shader to dull that down and shade it and i'm going to highlight up his face as i normally do sort of his eyebrow eyebrow bones and his nose and then i'm going to do some freehand painting and catch on just copying along with that artwork and he's got a couple of lines across his staff something on the head of his staff and then he's got these lines across his biceps a couple on each arm and that's it and just really i'm using my insane detail brush to do that and just really really carefully taking my time to draw those lines all the way around his body and then for my base as i often do i'm just going to use just plain black just finish it off honestly the adding a base even if it's just plain black is going to make the the model just really come together and look great and then just before i spin it and show you how it finally looks i just want to take 10 seconds 30 seconds a bit longer to just mention journal 29 if you guys didn't see i did a review of this i don't often do many reviews but this is hands down my favorite game at the moment 
if you like puzzle games, if you like riddle games, if you like escape the rooms, I think this is really, really like the puzzle you get in escape the room style things. This is worth a look. I will put a link in the description below to the review. It's current, it's on Amazon for about $10, so it doesn't cost a lot. And it's currently on Kickstarter, a sequel to it. And I'll put that in the description below if you'd like to check that out. Honestly, if you like escape rooms, just give it a look. It, it's it's my favorite game. Uh, I've nearly done it though, so we'll be banging on about something else one day soon. Now, let's just have a look at the finished model. This is what it's gonna look like if you follow along with this tutorial and you can paint about how I paint. It took me about an hour and a half, not too bad. It's one of the models that looks really nice close up. It's really subtle skin changes, low contrast, that sort of thing. Now, if you want a higher contrast, make it stand out a little bit better at a distance on your board, just throw in a purple shade or something like the Toxic Shader by Army Painter, and that's really gonna make his skin pop a lot more from a distance, you'll be able to see it, that sort of effect. Now, hopefully you've enjoyed this. That's all 12 videos of the core set completely finished. Uh, I've not finished a set before, do other painters finish sets? Who knows? Hopefully you've enjoyed it and hopefully you'll stay subscribed. There'll probably be some Wave 2 Kickstarter slash expansions coming up in the near future. And if you do get a chance, please do check out my Patreon. I massively, massively love the, the sort of moral support it gives me and that sort of encouragement and just helps me slog the hours into these videos. Thank you all very much for watching.